I did some uh, reading lately about Ötzi the snowman and uh, I think it's a fascinating uh, piece of history uh, that we can look at. Ötzi was named because he was found in the Ötztal Alps uh, just on the border between Italy and Austria uh, and he was alive 5,000 years ago but since he was buried in the ice he's uh, been preserved or rather the items that he carried has been preserved uh, so that there really aren't any other items from that period of time that we can study to the same detail that we can see from Etsy and when I was reading about this guy uh, there are a number of things that that sort of reminds me of spending time in nature and the way we do it today as well there are a lot of connections so I just thought I would record a short video on my own thoughts about this and I'm sure that you can make your own conclusions and have some ideas about stuff that you can connect with um, it's just some something that inspired myself so I, I thought maybe it will inspire someone else as well the image on the right here is a reconstruction of the items that Etsy were carrying so he was dressed in goat furs which implies that he has a agricultural background uh, he was also carrying bread uh, made from wheat so uh, he were he was from some kind of background where they were farming and they kept goats as animals uh, his hat was bear fur so uh, obviously they were able to hunt some pretty big game as well and then he had this outside coat of straw that you can see and he had some weapons and tools as well I will go into more about that uh, later in this video uh, in the middle video you can see uh, another uh, reconstruction try someone trying to imitate the items that Etsy was carrying uh, with this uh, goat fur coat and uh, this guy in the middle he has the outer straw mantle sort of rolled up on his back so Etsy was carrying a backpack as well now they've done lots of analysis of Etsy to try and find out more about his life and, and figure out what life would have been like back in 5,000 years ago and they found out a lot of things about him for example uh, in his hair they found large amount of arsenic and you would find a lot of arsenic from someone who would work with copper uh, so this is the Neolithic, so the New Stone Age, and uh, they still used stone tools, but they started to discover uh, copper and copper ore and being able to create items from that. The Copper was still very rare resource, and uh, to be able to work copper, uh, you would be an important person because that was like the the big thing that you would be able to work with this metal so from that reason we could assume that Etsy was probably like the the village leader or something like that usually the smiths were the most important people in the village because of their ability to work with metals Etsy also carried an axe with a copper blade so uh, having this very expensive and rare uh, piece of equipment shows again that he probably was some kind of important person what they also found on Etsy was uh, in his hand he had a deep cut a wound from fighting there were also some reports of several people's blood on him or his clothes and from the healing process on the hand wound they could see that he probably was injured about one week before uh, he died so he was in some kind of a fight and in that fight he was injured but apparently he won the fight and he 
you would assume that he killed his opponents. Uh, but for some reason, he had to leave his village after that. And uh, he may have... He may have lost some of his equipment in his when he was leaving the village because uh, for example he he had he didn't have any arrows left he the arrows that was in his quiver were manufactured on the way when he was traveling and the bow as well was he was manufacturing a bow it wasn't finished yet so he was carrying a half finished bow and a quiver with only two arrows that were finished and the rest of them were work in progress so it seems like well he he was well equipped but some of his equipment he had to replace as he was traveling uh, which suggests to me that even though he won the fight uh, for some reason he had to go and this fight I mean it could have been that his village was attacked by someone and he managed to survive the attack and leave the village maybe because it was the village leader that he was protected by others uh, and then left for somewhere else who knows where the thing is that uh, this wound in the hand is not the only injury that Etsy had he the reason why he died was first of all he had a blow to the head which uh, was not f fatal probably it could possibly be caused by some ice or something but I think uh, the analysis shows that the the blow to the head uh, was an injury for him that he ran away from and then uh, that occurred after the wound to the hand so it seems like people were chasing him and it, the cause of death they believe was an arrow that uh, hit him in the shoulder shoulder area somewhere I'm not sure exactly how the thing is even though he was killed by this arrow in his shoulder and he bled to death presumably or maybe he was too weak from the bleeding and then he died from the cold or something like that um, even though that happened they didn't take his axe which was a really valuable tool so it seems like he was able to escape his attackers once again after being shot with this arrow uh, which is intriguing but um, yeah I mean obviously we don't really know what happened to him it's quite uh, fun to speculate but the purpose of this video is to explore the, the the wisdom that he showed in his equipment and the way that he equipped himself for moving through this area of the Alps uh, and compare it a little bit to the equipment that we use in modern times uh, which for me I thought this was interesting so first let's just look at the area where he was found so uh, he was uh, he was found in the north of Italy just on the border between Austria and Italy here and if we zoom in on that area you can see it here that it's on this ridge mountain ridge uh, that he was found quite uh, high up uh, and the people looking into this for some reason I'm not sure why but they assume that his point of origin is somewhere in this Vinchgau area and from there they say that he traveled to that point and I'm not sure how if he would just run away from attackers maybe he would have run over the mountains maybe if he was survived some attack here maybe he went along the valley and got attacked again got the blow to his head or something and went up into the mountains this way who knows I mean no one can say for sure uh, they did study a lot of pollen and something on him and and assume that he was traveling during the spring late winter spring where flowers start to appear after the snow melt but obviously up on the high altitudes where he was found it would have been ice and snow and, and quite cold so uh, he should have been dressed for cold weather and, and in the spring if we look even closer to the area where he was found you see the red dot where they found his body and as you see in this area this is normally quite snow covered and there's 
almost no plants or anything growing here. I don't think you would find any animals either. So even though he had equipment for hunting, um, he, he didn't come to this area to hunt. He was probably escaping his attackers in some way. Uh, there are uh, popular trekking paths here. You can see the people down here walking who are using cabins to sleep. And it's popular to go to one of these cabins. You sleep in a cabin and then you go on a day hike up on the mountains and you come back the same day to sleep in here so that you can travel quite light. Now Etsy was also traveling very light, but he didn't have access to any cabins or anything, so he would sleep under the sky in all likelihood. Uh, there are some old ruins in this area where they built like stone, a stone wall in a circle or something, or a spiral where uh, you would be protected from the winds and those stone covers are also from that kind of time period so there were people regularly moving through these parts of the world uh, so regularly that they would build uh, covers from stones but uh, he, i don't he probably didn't have that much of a house or anything to live in especially since he seems to have been escaping from attackers now, if you look at the geography here, there are some glaciers in the area around him. Uh, some people suggested that maybe he was going out to trade or something. But if he would have been going out to trade, he should have been taking a different route that is easier to travel, not go up into these high mountain areas. Uh, there is, of course, another valley over here that you could go into, but then it would be closer to go a different route than the one he took. And since he died from an arrow wound, I mean, it, it seems quite obvious that he was attacked and running from someone hunting him. But maybe he was actually, maybe he knew about this lake. Maybe he moved after his first fight. Maybe he moved into this area to, because he knew that he would be able to survive here. And then they found him and they chased him up uh, into the mountains. Who knows? I mean, we can speculate, right? But... Uh, his equipment would be to survive in this type of environment where you have some forest, some water. This is a dam, I think, but should have been some kind of water body even back then. And uh, being able to hunt and, and survive in this environment long term is what you would assume from him. Just looking at what... A, a modern man would bring into this area. This is from the Ötztal Alps, according to the Google search that I did. This is just a Google picture, or a picture I find through the Google search engine. So this guy, he's, got, he's in the summer, so you see that even on the high peaks there's no snow, so this is not the period where Ötzi was active. It's much warmer, and you can see that he's wearing the shorts. He doesn't even cover his legs because it's so warm. He still has very sturdy boots because you need good boots when you are walking through this very rocky terrain. And uh, he has a warm sweater, a cotton shirt it looks like under it. Uh, not the optimal outfit, but for a day hike, I'm, uh, that's fine. And just a small backpack with maybe some food or something in it. So that's like the, the modern day tourist version of moving through this area. This picture is also from the Ötztal Alps, as I uh, saw. And uh, here you can see that the peaks actually have some snow on them. So this would probably be in the spring or autumn. And then you can see that they're wearing full length pants. They are wearing sturdy boots again. And a backpack with a bit more items in it for maybe a bit longer hike. A hat to protect from the cold. And... Uh, jacket which is probably waterproof at least windproof um, all the material here appears to be polyester uh, some kind of material that will quickly uh, let you perspirate and transport the water away from your body because when you move up in these hills you're going to sweat quite a bit it's, it's a lot of hard work and of course they have the trekking poles to keep the weight load even and to also keep your balance when you're walking 
is a good help. If we look at some people who are actually working in this environment and they're here daily, then uh, these are some, I think these are Italian farmers, uh, not exactly the area of Etsy, but in the Alps around there. You can see that this is also spring or autumn because there's snow on the ground. And if you look at their equipment, the boots are not really visible. The pants will be, looks like a polyester cotton blend, um, which they probably choose this because it's very strong. And when they handle animals and, and other things, it, they will not get holes in their pants. So I guess that's a good thing. Uh, he seems to have some kind of reinforced uh, apron. Maybe this guy, the blue thing. Uh, got some gloves. This one doesn't have gloves. They do have the walking stick to keep the balance and keep the load even. At least this guy has a backpack to carry some food and something with him. They got jackets, which are... It looks like they're waterproof. This one at least is waterproof. I would guess this one is as well. Uh, this guy looks like maybe he has a cotton shirt under. Could be a wool shirt. And I'm not sure what material this guy has under there. Could also be cotton or wool. Probably cotton, actually. And then a wool hat on top to keep. Keeping your head warm is very important, especially when it's a bit colder and wet like this. So that's the equipment of people working in this area in modern day. Uh, here's another picture of people working in this same area. And as you see again, they have the wool hats to keep their heads warm. They have the, these, both of these guys I think have cotton shirts. Again, some kind of reinforced apron or something, maybe a, a fanny pack to carry things on your belly. I'm not sure what this is long trousers pants and again quite sturdy shoes this is a bit more soft shoe than the previous ones but still a uh, good shoe for walking but still sturdy to keep the balance and with these rocks lying about it is important and of course the backpack this guy has a much larger backpack than previous ones Probably to carry some extra clothes when you have a cotton shirt you need to change the shirt when you sweat so that you can have dry clothes if you're gonna stay otherwise you're gonna freeze a lot probably has some waterproof equipment in there as well to keep a jacket on if it's raining and the stick for walking so looking at Etsy then uh, we can see that starting from his shoes his shoes were very simple the main feature would be the leather sole of the shoes, which would protect him from the sharp edges of rocks, but he would still have to be very strong in his ankles to not uh, hurt himself while walking in this rocky terrain. And it is possible that uh, he mainly intended to walk around the, the lake and in the forest area. I mean, we don't know where he came from or where he intended to go, but then he had long trousers long pants just like the other guys who are staying up here in cold weather uh, Etsy had the goat fur trousers and the goat fur overcoat as well and other than those two items he also had the loincloth so the, the 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 trousers actually end on his thighs and then he had the fanny pack with some uh, tinder and some material to light a fire he had the knife quiver with arrows he had the axe and a bow that wasn't quite finished yet so it's maybe he used this as a stick for walking as well we don't know uh, and then a backpack for carrying some things he had the hat of bear fur to keep his head warm which is very important when it's a bit cold and then he had some containers of birch to carry fire with him it's a very simple outfit. Oh, and then also the straw uh, coat. And the straw coat would be equivalent to rain protection that we wear today. So the rain would just, whoops, uh, the rain would just drizzle off this. 
so actually we see a lot of a lot of similarities between the equipment that Etsy used 5,000 years ago and the equipment that we use today uh, but let's go into each of these items in a bit more detail so first of all the shoes this is the right one is a reconstructed copy where you have the, the leather sole to protect the feet from sharp rocks and then on top of that you only have this kind of rope net to keep the foot in place on top of this you might think that well with this coarse net the toes are just going to go right through this but uh, this is a common thing that they did in the old days they filled the shoes with grass dry grass and by filling the shoes with dry grass it's kind of like a, a thick sock and the thick sock would make the toes to stay inside of the net as well so his feet probably didn't move around much probably quite secured in this shell of dry grass and maybe these shoes are more stable than it looks I mean I never tried anything like this uh, but of course he, Etsy was probably also quite experienced with traveling in this terrain so he probably had very strong ankles and not as likely to hurt himself as we modern people his his trousers were goat fur and if you look at goat fur as a material we use it to, even today in many things because it's a very soft leather it's a leather that is very comfortable and very uh, easy to shape and this is something that is quite important if you're going to do a lot of walking that you have a soft material that is not going to cause any chafing or or cause you to uh, feel uncomfort in some way so uh, it seems like Etsy was really dressed for a lot of comfort as well as warmth because of the fur he also had this loincloth that would so the leggings only went up some part of his legs and then he had the loincloth under that and then he had this coat which is largely destroyed but uh, a goat fur coat that went down all the way down here somewhere I think so he would be quite protected just from this he would be quite protected from the winds at high altitudes um, the fur on the goat would cause some water to run off I guess but it would get wet uh, fairly quickly so having these this uh, straw mantle would make it a lot easier for him to stay dry and warm if there is a rain coming or snow or anything like that it would also help to break up the wind of course so uh, an important part of his outfit for sure so looking at him get dressed this is some kind of attempt to reconstruct that uh, I'm not sure these in this picture they start with a fanny pack I don't think the fanny pack was like that I think he had it more outside but I'm not really sure the fanny pack should be kept dry because he had materials in there to make a fire and to make a fire you need to keep it dry so you would want to keep it away from your body sweat but also out of the rain so uh, yeah I'm not sure exactly how that was configured on him but uh, in these pictures they put it so that the loincloth is kept up by his fanny pack with the leggings his shoes and then the fur coat on top I tried to find modern items made with goat fur G goat leather you can find uh, lots of pants and other stuff but uh, goat fur you don't really find that much but I did find this latest jacket which kind of looks like the one that Etsy had in a way except that his was made with these stripes so it seems like he had some kind of fashion sense even 5,000 years ago the hat he had was from bear fur this is brown bear obviously I tried to find a modern equivalent of this as well and the only thing I could find was black bear 
but you can see that the model is quite similar. I'm not sure why they don't make any different model because normally if you if you have a fur hat like this you would want air flaps to go down because you would use this type of hat in very cold weather and having air flaps makes a huge difference in the temperature of your body so maybe it's just the fact that this hat is so warm that it's going to be too warm with air flaps uh, i'm not sure but you'd see that the design of bare fur hats hasn't really changed in 5,000 years which is kind of interesting in itself I don't think most people would have access to bare fur it's very <laughs> unusual I don't think you would use it to make a hat if you had it um, but I'm sure it's quite warm and good protection from the weather the backpack now we get into something really interesting because the backpack is super simple it's only one rod of wood bent like this and then two pieces of wood ho holding it together with some string to bend to make sure that it doesn't go out. So some string crosswise like this to hold it together. I think there may also have been some birch tar to act as a glue. And then apparently there was some kind of a fur here as well. Now for a backpack, you wouldn't choose a fur like this for a bag or anything uh, because that would be a lot of excess weight and you can see from the materials that Etsy used that he was quite conscious about the weight he was carrying he didn't want to carry any excess weight just like we think today where we have a lot of trends in ultralight backpacking and so on so presumably the reason why he picked this fur for his backpack was for comfort to have a soft piece of fur against his back when he's carrying something heavy on here. Um, now, the wood is also very interesting. I don't, I'm not sure what the lattices here are made for, what type of wood this is, uh, but this rod here is bent. And if you ask someone who knows a lot about wood, what is the best type of wood you could use if you're gonna bend a rod like this? They're probably going to answer hazel. And then hazel is exactly the wood that Etsy used. Hazel is a material that has very good qualities for bending like this. It's not going to splinter up uh, and it's going to maintain its form. So it, it is quite interesting that Etsy chose the wood material that is the optimal material to use for this purpose. In the backpack, I presume, or attached to the backpack, he had these birch bark containers. Uh, birch bark is, again, a material that is extremely lightweight, but strong, and an excellent choice for a container if you want to have a lightweight container that is not going to break. So again, he chose a material for this container that is really optimal. In this birch bark container, he had some fresh leaves from some tree, big fresh leaves that would not start burning. And with this pack of fresh leaves, he would collect the coals from the previous fire uh, so that he would carry burning coals with him so that he could easily start uh, a new fire again. He also had uh, flint and some pyrite, which when you strike them together, they will produce a spark. So he could use those to create a fire as well as a second tool. And obviously being able to make a fire is extremely important. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's quite interesting that he chose this lightweight, str strong material for these containers. And it is possible that he had something else in the containers previously as well. We don't know exactly what was in them. Um, he also had a first aid kit. And that's also something, of course, that you would carry in modern times. His first aid kit is a bit different than what we would use. These white things here are some pieces of a mushroom on a string. Now this mushroom 
if you would eat it, would give you a diarrhea. And in modern times, we're going to say that, well, having a diarrhea is really bad. But in, in those days, it was quite common to have parasites in your stomach, like worms or something. And analyzing Ed's stomach, it turns out that, yeah, he did have those kind of parasites. So it is possible that he was eating this uh, mushroom to give himself a diarrhea to flush out those stomach parasites as a medical treatment. Another use for this particular mushroom is that if you apply it to a wound, it will stop the bleeding. And we know that Etsy had a wound in his hand that was one week old. So it is possible that he collected this mushroom knowing that he was bleeding and he needed to make the bleeding stop. Uh, and I'm sure that this is the type of knowledge that is just lost in modern days. Most people walking around the woods would not know to apply that kind of treatment, even though we have the knowledge somewhere on the internet that we could find it. But uh, yeah, I think it's quite interesting that he had this kind of some kind of medicinal equipment with him uh, to take care of his ailments. Uh, this is a reconstruction of his fanny pack that he was carrying. So he had some kind of a, a leather pouch around his belly where he kept flint and pyrite to make a spark and some other, uh, I think he had some tinder in here as well. And then the, the other stuff that we will talk about. So the knife that he had was a flint knife. And with the flint knife, you have this the black tip here is a piece of a deer antler that has been hardened in fire. So with this hardened deer antler, uh, you can use that to break off chips from a flint piece to make the edge sharper. So this is a knife sharpener that he's carrying around. But this deer antler piece is very small and it would hurt if you hold that alone in your hand. So you have this piece of wood around it. Uh, to make it easier to work the flint and not get pain in the hand. Uh, now, he could have chosen any type of wood for this handle, uh, but he chose linden tree for the handle. And interestingly, linden is the type of wood that is very lightweight and great to uh, use for something that you're going to carry around if you go trekking or something. Again, it's this idea of having a, a lightweight pack. The sheath uh, for the knife was made by, again, fibers from the linden tree. This is bark fibers from the linden tree. But the handle of the knife was made from ash wood. And ash is the type of wood that is very hard, is like hickory. Uh, hickory is what we use for the shafts of an axe in modern times. Uh, so it's it's a common uh, type of wood to use for tools where you need something that doesn't break. And to make it even more sturdy, he had some animal tendon and something wrapped around it and a string to tie it to the sheath. So uh, the, the selection of material here is very conscious about picking something that is the optimal material for this kind of tool, for optimal material for what he's going to use it for, which I think is quite interesting. The knife blade appears to be very small, but probably this knife blade was a lot bigger. It's just that he used this retoucher to break off pieces to keep the edge sharp when he was working with it. The axe was a copper axe and Probably he made him this himself because he appears to be a copper worker. And of course, he also knew how to sharpen it. And that's the benefit of the copper axe that it's quite easy to keep sharp compared to a stone axe. The handle is made of yew. And yew wood uh, is, again, a material that is really durable. It's, it's the same material that you use for a bow. It, it used to be such a popular type of wood to use for, for woodworking, these kind of things, that we pretty much wiped out that tree from Europe. 
we don't really have it much anymore. I mean, it, it, it still exists here and there, but it's not as common as it, as it used to be because we used it so much for woodworking. So again, it's the optimal material for this type of tool, a type of wood that is not going to break when you keep hacking at things. And the bow, again, is you as well. And you can see that he was still working on this bow. It's not been smooth or anything. He didn't have a string for it. It's never been used. He's just preparing it because for some reason he lost his previous bow. The arrows, he made two arrows. He made the shafts for many more hour arrows, but he didn't make the, the arrow heads. Um, and the quiver, again, the quiver was reinforced with a stick like this that is bent in the end uh, to protect it and this bending what do you need to use for bending material you use hazel hazel is great for bending and again hazel is what he used here the arrow shafts the th the best material to use for arrow shafts uh, there are a few different materials you could use of course but one of the really good ones is the um, Olavon in Swedish. What's that in English? Uh, I don't remember. Horwithy or something like that. Um, anyway, it's it's a type of wood that is going to keep its shape and stay very straight, even when it's dried and handled and so on. Uh, so again, it is one of the best possible types of wood that you could use for arrow shafts, and that is the material that Ötzi used. So he seems to be very aware of the optimal material to use. So in summary, you can see that he chose the goat leather, which is very soft and comfortable. So he dressed for comfort. He had both uh, the fur for warmth and the this outer coat for keeping the rain and snow off of him. So to keep himself dry and warm, again with comfort. A lot of his materials were chosen for their light weight. Uh, so again, with comfort, but still something that is very important if you're gonna, going to walk a very long distance. He had two different ways of making a fire. Again, something that is important. He had some food with him. And as I understand, he didn't find any food on his body or in his backpack. Uh, his body was not eaten by any animals, which indicate that there shouldn't have been any animals eating the food from his backpack either. Otherwise, they would have gone into his body and eaten him as well. And the people should not have taken his food because then they would have taken his axe as well because the axe was very valuable. So it seems like Etsy actually died after having eaten his last meal. And when they looked at his stomach contents, they saw an unusually large amount of flies in his stomach, like house flies. So it could be that he knew that he was running out of food. So he put the, the meat out for the flies to come there. And then he killed flies to eat them to get some extra protein. Uh, but he did have some food with him. And the food he carried was some dry bread from wheat which is again lightweight good for carrying around and he had some uh, meat one th his his last meal was red deer but the meal before that was ibex which is a goat living in the mountain and i don't think he killed those himself even though he had the tools for it because he only had one meal of each so it appears like he grabbed some meat with him carrying food with him and then he was running out of food when he they caught up to him and killed him so again he had the tools to make his bow and everything the axe and the knife uh, he had the hunting tools for collecting more food along the way even though it appears that he actually ran out of it but he he was preparing himself for being able to catch more food and staying alive I think someone also mentioned somewhere that he had a net or something with him. So uh, he had various ways of gathering food resources. 
And in his stomach, they also found uh, various herbs. I, I didn't find any mention of the species of herbs that he was eating, but he was eating herbs that he collected as well. So uh, he obviously knew how to get food in the wild. Uh, and he had the tools to collect that food. And then he had the first aid kit uh, to heal himself from the injuries that he had and keep himself healthy. So if you look at modern equipment, we actually get really, really close. Uh, this backpack is from Paul Kirtley. And I'm going to go through a list that he put up uh, with the contents of that. And you will see that it matches this list fairly well. Now, Paul Kirtley is a British guy who likes to go out on hikes into the wild. And normally he only goes out for a few days. It's not like a long-term survival. And he's going to carry quite a lot of things, actually. So you will see that uh, it is fairly similar to what Ötzi had. Obviously, Ötzi didn't have any equipment for sleeping in the wild, which Paul does carry. He has a sleeping bag, sleeping mat, and a bivy bag to keep the rain out, and a tarp to also like act together as protection from the weather when he's sleeping. The backpack that Paul uses, this one, is obviously, it has a lot more material to it than the one that Ötzi carried. So he's also going to weigh a lot more it's going to be more weight to carry around so etsy was more of a ultralight backpacker than what paul currently is uh, paul also has a dry bag in his backpack to keep everything out of the rain he has a steel can and spoon uh, to eat from which etsy had the only containers they found on etsy were the the birch bark containers so uh, again paul currently uh, is carrying around a lot more weight um, the water purifier again something that etsy didn't bother with he would probably boil his water over a fire uh, is what i would expect anyway but then he also had the stomach parasites and and other stomach problems so I mean, maybe he just accepted that he was going to get sick. Paul carries two water bottles with him, uh, which Etsy did not. Uh, he also carries a wash kit for washing his equipment and a hygiene kit for washing himself, which again, we didn't see anything like that in Etsy. Uh, Paul uses a wool underlayer, so that's the first layer. And we could say that Ötzi had kind of, I mean, he had the goat fur, which has a wool layer to it, although he kept it the wool uh, on the outside in that case. Uh, Paul also keeps a wool shirt on top of that as the second layer. And then I think, uh, I don't know what pants he used, but I think that they are cotton polyester blend pants, if I remember correctly. He carries some extra socks, underwear, and t-shirt uh, that are going to be dry, something to change into. He has bandana warm hat. Again, we saw a warm hat with Etsy as well. He also carries a head torch for lighting uh, when it's dark, which obviously Etsy, he could carry a fire, but Etsy was also hunted by someone. Someone was trying to kill him, so maybe he would try to avoid making a lot of light. We don't know. Paul carries both an axe and a saw and a knife. So it's the only had the axe and a knife. And obviously the saw uh, can make your life easier uh, in some ways, but it's also extra weight to carry. So then uh, Paul currently has the fire steel and he also has matches and a lighter, I think. I'm not sure, but I think he has some more stuff. So there are a couple of different ways to light a fire. He has the first aid kit, which is obviously more advanced than what Etsy had. Uh, some binoculars, which probably are just for fun. And then map and a compass, which Etsy would have to keep in his head instead of using uh, this. And pro I mean, Etsy, he would, he, he would, from the materials that he used, the knowledge that he, sh his, the, his choice of material shows a knowledge about nature that is so much bigger 
and it appears that he would be the type of person that would move around the landscape all the time. So Etsy probably knew this area really well and for that reason shouldn't need a map uh, that much. But I mean, you have a map in your head if you travel through an area that you know well. So I also found a page called Alderleaf Wilderness College, which I think is a really good page uh, with some uh, decent material uh, so what they recommend for long-term living in the wild is to keep flint and steel which is exactly what Etsy had for making a fire knife and axe which is exactly what Etsy had first aid kit well the Etsy one was rather simple but yeah rain poncho is what they recommend uh, and that is what Etsy also had with this straw jacket. Fishing equipment, and I think the reason why they recommend fishing equipment is because generally in modern days, hunting is quite limited by the rules set from society. And uh, because we also, I mean, we killed most of the living things out there already. So hunting is not as easy as it used to be. Fishing is a lot more easy. And also carrying some extra food with you because you never know if you're going to catch anything. Uh, they recommend having a cup or a canteen, a water purifier, extra clothing, 30 meters of rope, which Etsy had some rope that he used in his backpack, but that rope was made from plant fibers and obviously Etsy was able to make his own rope from just collecting plants. If you know the plant material, it's not really that difficult to make a rope. It just takes some time. Uh, of course, it is a lot easier for you to carry that rope around with you, especially if you have something like uh, the paracord or something that is quite lightweight. And then they recommend the wool blanket to stay warm. So, but the thing is, if you, if you look at this kind of list for a modern a modern way of approaching a, a long-term living in the wild, you get really close to Etsy. And I think that is quite fascinating that even with the primitive materials that he used, it is just the same as what we use today. It's just that uh, the materials that we have access to today are more advanced than anything he had, obviously. Uh, the the biggest improvement I think that we can see in modern materials is the shoes first of all I mean modern shoes are quite they're really great and uh, and then the rain protection we have some lightweight raincoats and ponchos that you can use today that obviously someone like Etsy wouldn't have but really it's not that far from what we use today and that's that's what I thought was quite quite inspiring to think about that if you would go out into the woods today well you would start out with modern materials but if you have this kind of knowledge you can easily replace everything you have with the things that you collect from the wild and I think that uh, that is something that well it, it, it inspires me anyway to some thoughts and ideas so I hope you thought as well that uh, you found some interest in this. It is easy to find more information about Etsy online. And uh, of course, there's also museums and you can go visit the site in that area if you have a big interest. But uh, yeah, I just thought I would share some of my thoughts about this.